Hey folks, Marcus here from the Ash and Fly Shop. Today we're out on the water and we wanted to talk about a topic that comes up quite a bit in the shop. Um, this video is probably more geared at the folks of you out there that are learning how to spay cast, getting into the sport, but um, there will probably be a couple tips in here that everyone finds useful. So today we're talking about the difference between Skagit lines and Scandi lines. Um, they're the two most popular type of lines that we fish out here for steelhead um, with spay rods on the west coast. Um, and we get a lot of questions about the differences between them, the different applications that you can use the lines for. So that's what we're gonna go over here today. We're gonna have an overview here in the boat and then later on we'll go out on the water and we'll do a little casting and show you the application of each line on the water. So right off the bat, what is a Skagit line and what is a Scandi line? Essentially, a Skagit line is a short, aggressive taper that's designed to load the rod um, at a, at a certain distance. And it's really designed for sink tip fishing and larger flies. So when I mean larger flies, um, anytime you're out fishing and you're trying to throw a fly like this, it should just key you off that you, you need to be fishing a Skagit line. Um, we'll show you later what that's like trying to throw a big fly like that on a Scandi line. Um, so it's just designed, a lot of these flies that we throw in the winter time, when you think of big intruders, just think of Skagit lines because that's really the purpose. So what's a Scandi line and why would you want it? Basically, a Scandi line is longer and finer. Um, and coming from Montana, the way that I think about the two different lines is I think about a Skagit line as a streamer fishing line and I think about a Scandi line more as a dry fly taper. Um, it's more finesse oriented. It doesn't load the rod way down into the butt. Um, it's kind of casted off the tip and whereas with Skagit casting, you're using your water loaded casts like your peri poke your snap tee, your double spay. The Scandi line really excels at the touch and go cast. So that's the snake roll, the spiral spay, and the single spay. Not that there's not a little bit of back and forth between those, but those are kind of rough guidelines um, to think about. So let's talk a little bit about the types of sink tips that work on each type of line. Um, Skagit lines are a really versatile line and they can ca cast a lot of different types of sink tips from, from light versaliters to 15 foot long tips to tungsten material mo tips. Um, so if you've got a Skagit line, you have kind of a wide array of tips. You can cast uh, you know, a five by five mo or say 10 feet of T11 is a really common tip that you'd cast on a Skagit line, 12 and a half foot mo tips. Um, especially on lighter rods and Skagit lines, you can fish Versaliters too, or, or 15 foot tips. But the Scandi line, because the taper is longer and finer, um, you're really not gonna have any success trying to ca cast these mo or tungsten tips off a of Scandi line. So that's, that's a dead giveaway. If you're going on a trip or you're trying to fish an area and it calls for lead core tips or tungsten material, 10 feet of T11, it should just set it off in your brain that you need a Skagit line for that trip because the Scandi's just not gonna perform that well. So a standard Scandi is in the you know, 30, 35 foot range and they work really well with casting full monofilament leaders um, or like a floating poly leader and fishing up near the surface. Um, but they also work with light sinking tips. My, my favorite on there are the Rio Light Scandi um, Versa leaders. They come in a, a floating, a one inch, 1.5 inch per second, three inch per second, and five inch per second. And they actually work really nice on Scandi lines. And you can throw anything from, you know, a small, muddler minnow all the way up to 
say a hobo spay or a general practitioner, but um, you know, a Scandi line is really designed to cast your more traditional flies, uh, muddlers, green butt skunks, light hobo spays, that type of thing, just smaller patterns. Um, so it's, it's kind of a dead giveaway if you're, you know, you're on a trip and they're recommending smaller flies, that's a situation where your Scandi line might come in, come in handy. So let's talk a little bit about time of year for these two lines. Um, the rule of thumb that I would think about is your Scandi lines are oriented towards summer and fall when your water temperatures are higher generally and your fish are more active, more likely to come up to the surface to grab a fly. And your Skagit line is a little bit more useful in the late fall and winter when you have colder water and sink tip fishing is required. Um, that's just a general rule. I would say within that rule, if you think about your Skagit line as your streamer line, and your Scandi line as your light finesse kind of dry fly line or dry line. There's days trout fishing where you want to throw a streamer and a dry fly in the same day, just like steelhead fishing out here. Um, there's often times where we'll go on a float and we'll bring Scandi lines and Skagit lines in the same, we'll fish them in the same day because certain, ro certain runs will fish better with, with a bigger fly and a sink tip and other runs will fish better with a light fly um, and just kind of coming through a tail out or a soft riffle. For those of you who are new to the sport, I think you should really look at Skagit lines to begin with. Um, those are the lines that I started with. I cast a Skagit line for probably a year before ever picking up a Scandi line and I working in the shop recommend that to beginners quite a bit um, and that just becomes part of the taper of the line so your your Skagit lines in that 20 to 25 foot range and it's a really aggressive bulky taper we'll show you in a little bit the Skagit line is just so much thicker than the Scandi line and it really gives you a lot of feedback and feel in the hands when you're casting Plus, being you know 10 or 12 feet shorter, it's a lot easier to turn over a Skagit line than it is a Scandi line. So when you're when you're in the beginning, I would just say stick with your Skagit until you get to a point with that where you're really comfortable from both sides of the river, casting on both sides of your body. And once you get to that point, I would say you know when the sun, next summer comes, start exploring the Scandi lines. So we'll hit the water and we'll kind of show you some of the different casts that each of these lines excel with. So come on the water with us. So we're down river. We got our Scandi set up that we're using here. And today that's the 13 foot seven weight Sage X with a 480 gram Rio Scandi short. On the end of that, I have a 14 foot poly leader and then about three feet of tippet to a, to a little muddler fly. This is a setup that I use quite a bit um, in the fall. And the thing to think about with Scandi casting compared to Skagit casting is, is that line is a little bit longer. So you're not, it's longer and lighter. You're not getting that, that feedback that you get from the shorter, more aggressively tapered Skagit line. So it requires a little bit more sensitivity to timing and making sure that you have the mechanics of your stroke proper. So if I were to put a really big sink tip on there or a really big fly on there, I'd probably start to have some pretty serious casting issues. So for the sake of this example, I'm gonna take this muddler off of here and I'm gonna put on a fly that's more in line with what we use on a Skagit line. And I think right away you should see um, pretty clearly why you wouldn't want to use a, a Scandi line for a bigger fly approach. So there we've got a pretty large fly that I would say is more of a Skagit type fly. And I've attached it to the end of my Scandi leader. 
and we'll see how that goes. Didn't quite work that well. And that's something to keep in mind is the Skagit line has a lot fewer limitations in terms of fly size than a Scandi line does. A Skagit line, you can throw small, you can put a floating tip on your Skagit and throw a small dry. You can put a traditional under a light sink tip. You can fish a big sink tip, a big fly. But the Scandi line, once you get into the big flies or big sink tips, you're gonna start to have problems. And you can just see when that comes out that the weight of the fly doesn't allow, it's just too, too much mass in the fly for when that line tries to kick over and turn that fly over, it just kind of flails out there. And that, that is a super important part about Scandi casting is, is you wanna keep it to light sink tips. So for casting Scandi lines, they really differ from Skagit's in that the Skagit is going to excel in those casts like the Snap T or the Double Spay or Perry Poke, where the rod is being loaded from, from being ripped off the water. And the Scandi line gets loaded from what we call the touch and go cast, which is just where the anchor briefly touches the surface of the water and then we go with our cast. So that's like the spiral spay or the single spay or the snake roll. And these casts um, take a little bit longer, I think, to learn and, and get dialed in on. Um, but they're really dang fun. And, and from, a, from a fishing perspective, um, one thing to keep in mind is like the single spay right there, you're doing one lift and you're coming across your body and then you're going. So from a function as far as fishing and saving time compared to some of the other casts that we can get into, it really is an efficient cast. You're just pulling in the line and getting it right back out there compared to some other casts where we might set up the anchor and then move and do another stroke. So from a casting perspective, it allows you to get into some casts that are quick and efficient, um, and that's, that's an important part of Scandi lines. But it is worth noting with these lines that though they do excel at those touch and go casts like snake roll, spiral spay, single spay, you can still do all of the casts that you're used to doing with your Skagit line. You just have to make sure that you've got your timing right. You gotta pause a little bit longer, let that D-loop build behind you. But you can do a double spay and a snap T with, with a little bit of practice. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you learned a little bit about the differences between Scandi and Skagit lines and where each one of those could fit in your fishing program.